Australia's first Indigenous Youth Climate Network is raising awareness of the impacts of global warming on our communities. The group, known as SEED, recently undertook a road trip from far north Queensland to Brisbane to share their vision and to collect stories from our mob who are witnessing the effects of climate change. We are SEED, a national network led by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander young people working to make climate justice a reality for our people. SEED has been making headlines after campaigning against Australia's big banks to not fund coal projects around central yeah. Queensland's Galilee I'm Basin. Climate change is one of the greatest threats facing humanity, and core to this crisis is the loss of country, cultures and livelihoods of Indigenous peoples across the world. In Australia, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are at the forefront of the causes and impacts of climate change, and as young people, it's our generation with the most at stake. By building solutions that work towards justice for all people, the climate crisis presents an opportunity to create a more sustainable future. The seed mob landed in Townsville to, at the beginning of our road trip, um, which was really cool because Townsville is like the capital of North Queensland and we all came together. The second day of the road trip, we all boarded a ferry over to Magnetic Island to meet um, with another SEED member whose Magnetic Island is his country, and we're going to talk to his family there to hear about how climate change is impacting life on the island. And then, um, yeah, we headed over to the PCYC in Townsville for a yarning circle event with the local community. Um, yeah, and that event went really well. I was just blown away by all the beautiful stories that like the, the seed mob on the trip, like the 20 of us had to share about how climate change was personally affecting us. And it was just amazing to hear the stories and how it's motivated us to take action rather than um, disempowered us. And yeah. Everyone in the Seed Mob is so incredible and so strong. Hi, I'm Vanessa and I'm an Aranda woman from Alice Springs, but um, I currently live in Canberra. And to me, I know that seed goes in the ground. We went into the ground, we were all dead, we finished, until you people rose up and ran with it. Ran with the seed for the next generation. And to me, that's fantastic. The Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people were the first peoples of, of Australia, and they are the oldest living um, people in the world. And um, it should be noticed that they took care of the land they looked after the land, they knew when to burn, when not to burn. Um, they knew all these things, they, they weren't taught, they didn't read it out of a book. Um, and those you people are still carrying that seed that went into the ground to be burnt and rose again. So that's how, why, how I see seed. Seed is something that's rising up to let other, other people know, other countries, other nationalities know that we have a movement here of young people not just old people having a big whinge like I do sometimes. <laughs> well, the gas, the extraction of gas is, has ruined Gladstone 
They have a lot of diseases down there now. A fellow got into the water the other day and he had a scratch on his leg and he lost his leg below the knee within two weeks. So that's the destruction that I don't like. We used to go and pick up the long, bell, long bum shells on the beach and take them home and, and have them put them in the fire and roast them and all those sort of things and the periwinkles and all that. We'd catch fish, we'd catch crab, we'd go um, getting the things down there. You cannot do that now because in Gladstone it has come that you cannot walk in the, in the mud there anymore and besides the, uh, the um, aluminium smelter is right there and it's killed everything. Everything is just dead. It's poisonous, it's toxic, it's, there's no fish in the creeks anymore and that is the saddest part. Thank you so much because we need you. We need you like, like we've never needed young people to work for the land in Australia before because we have not done it. My name is Mabel Yoi Quackerwood. I'm a Bailey lady from Gladstone. Uh, I'm an elder. Um, well, I'm the oldest Bailey person living. So uh, I'm very proud of that. With rising sea levels, devastating floods, and increased heat waves, many Queenslanders are already facing the impacts of climate change. And we also know that the greatest long term threat to the Great Barrier Reef is global warming. Yet alarmingly, the Sunshine State is also home to some of the largest existing and proposed coal and gas projects in the country. Right now, Indian coal company Adani are proposing to build the world's biggest coal port on the Great Barrier Reef at Abbott Point. If built, it would unlock the Galilee Basin, one of the largest coal reserves in the world. As Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander young people, the stakes are high. Our country, cultures, climate and future are at risk. Climate change is not just an environmental issue, it's a social justice issue too. So a lot of these people, um, a lot of people that don't, you know, haven't really benefited from the fossil fuel industry are being affected first and worst. Uh, and they don't really have uh, the resources to defend themselves either. So um, we want to stand up for those people um, and help them, you know, empower them to take charge and have the power rather than, you know, being told what to do by someone who, you know, doesn't really care. I think the movement's got a lot, a lot of time to grow and a lot of things to achieve, but um, yeah, it's got pretty good momentum and I think I've got good faith in the people that are involved in it. So Ellie Beach was our second stop along um, our journey on the road trip. We came from Townsville to Ellie Beach. Um, Ellie Beach is the gateway to the Whit Sundays. So a lot of the community there are really passionate about protecting the Great Barrier Reef um, and do uh, much more targeted campaigns around dredging and dumping of spoil um, and stuff around the Adani, kind of like old coal mine. Um, so yeah, it was really great to see to meet the community there. Um, we were welcomed by Arnie Mabel and Arnie Esther. Um, Arnie Esther welcomed us to her country um, to hold this forum. Um, and they're both really amazing, inspiring elders. Anyway, on behalf of my elders and those that have passed, I'd like to welcome all of you here to country. And I know you just love it. <laughs> you know, love it. And um, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of things solved, find solutions today with everybody being here. Short and sweet to the point. Thank you very much for all of this being here and support because I'm fighting madly to stop these horrible conglomerates from going and taking our land and putting all these damned gas things everywhere that will ruin our land. So we had uh, with Sunday Residents Against Dumping, we had Reef Defenders, 350, the Elders of course, and we had Seed as well. Uh, and we just kind of like shared experiences and talked about how um, environmental organisations can better support um, Indigenous ones, especially um, SEED, Indigenous youth. Um, so it was a really positive experience. And then we had a rest day the next day 
where we got to kind of see a bit of the sights and it's such a beautiful place. Um, we, yeah, we went out to the beach, some people went to the lagoon um, and it was just uh, a really great stop along the way. And it was our last stop on the coast before we headed inland, so it was, it was really nice. My name is Talara. Um, I'm one of three Queensland State Coordinators for SEED. Um, I live here in Brisbane. We are the first generation to the impacts of climate change and we also the last generation can do anything about it. Um, and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth um, need to be at the forefront of this fight. Um, it's our duty to protect country and protect land. Um, and that's why we're all here working together. Um, and it's so good to have you all um, here supporting. So thank you. It's wonderful what you guys are doing to SEED and um, I'm still getting to understand a lot more of what you are doing, you know, and it makes me very proud to, to um, read about you young people. Hello, my name's Esther Gaby. I'm, I'm a descendant of the Naro people of Whitsundays. And I think it's very, very important, especially because a lot of the old people are, are passing on now, and um, it's time for the young ones to take over, which you are doing, and um, that's what we need as, as, as the elders, well, from my point of view anyway, you know, I think that's very, very important. Just to find out all the things you have done and to hear you speak, and about things that are passionate to us, but hearing it coming from you young people in a group and and showing your passion for everything that's there, you know, just speaking from my own point of view, because I, everything I get is just from in the local here and um, what I see on TV. But when you hear it firsthand from you young people, when you're speaking, you know, uh, that's a totally different impact, I think, on people. It has on me anyway, you know, and I think you're doing a wonderful job, very much so, very much so, yes. The environmental issues are there, especially with the reef, especially with the reef and the dredging and the dredging too. I mean, um, just think when all this was done, this, is, this was all pristine country and the little bit of pristineness that's still here we'd like to keep and that includes marinas. If you just take a look around at all the marinas that are here now. We used to go and par camp down there next to early um, Abel Point Marina, you know, there was a local spring there for fresh water. We used to part as camp there all the time. I remember going out fishing, you know, with Dad and them, Mum and them. Even out here, I've still got a photo of me out here at Cannonvale, and I'm the baby. And I look at that tree, and that tree's still there, you know. They were all sitting down there, fishing, oystering, you can do all that. You can't do it now. You can't go swimming down there, you can't go here, you can't go there because, oh, a dam's been put up there, oh, you can't have this, you know. It's all contaminated now from the mill, the gas, all that runoff. Places you used to go, go and just sit on the bank and have fish for turtles and stuff like that. We've lost a lot of stuff uh, around here in that, from that sort of thing, but um, it, and it has had a big impact. And, and you know, if we're going to put up with um, all that, well, we don't have to, and we shouldn't have to. But um, it, just just by being around people like the RAD and all, all these other communities, it just makes you more aware of things that are happening in your country and, that, and that's something we all need to know and how to deal with it and what's the best way of dealing with it, you know, because it's not nice and it's not right, you know, especially for the old people. I feel for my old people too, you know, you see things like that and you say, well, you're here to respect our past and present elders. It hits me here because you're talking about my ancestors and not, not only you, but you know, the broader community and that's why I get fired up in here. Yeah, a lot of issues out there. That's a big job you kids are going to be doing and I'm so grateful that you are there because you're going to be carrying it on when we're all gone, you know, and that's a given. That is a given, eh? I'm here because I care about communities, you know, I care about the impacts that are going to happen but for me I grew up in my country I got to see fully initiated elders and I understand like I didn't it wasn't until I moved to Brisbane that I understood the really strong connection to country and um, all the things that I was privileged to have and for me I really feel for a lot of the mob that 
you know, some people make decisions based on the fact that their country is going to be taken away from them. So they're being pragmatic. And I just, if this is where we talk about going beyond climate impacts. And our mob should not have to sign agreements with any government or any mining company if they don't want their land destroyed. That in itself, the seed itself, uh, it's a symbol of growth, I think, you know, where if, if uh, nurtured, watered, fed, uh, looked after, taken care of, you know. Our people have been doing it for thousands of years, isn't it? That, he, uh, that recycling in Aboriginal culture, nothing new to our people. During the seed road trip we went to Warabinda, one of the remote indigenous communities in Queensland and when we went there we first met with the mayor and the deputy mayor and since both of them were elders we also asked them how they saw climate change affect their community and their land in their lifetime. You know they were in touch with uh, nature I think, you know our people, thousands of years of uh, that knowledge, you know. But now these days, uh, some of those old people, there are only a few of them now, and, and they, they shake their head and they're still not too, sh they're not too sure. Because they say, no, we can't tell now we, we, when it's going to rain because things are not right, you know. So they, they, they can't say when the rains are coming or when it's time to burn off and that, you know. But, it's best that they look after country as long as they can because I think uh, in, in certain places there's the minds are overruling some of the decisions about what our people have done. The mines were asking about coming to country here in Warabinda. We as a council we said no we don't. And you know, there's, uh, there's enough mines all around us now, you know. But, uh, by saying, you know, that's saying you know, we take an ownership of our own, you know, c country and uh, our community, even though this community is uh, made up of over 50 different tribes. It's happened, you know. And I've been told now they just go in and scar the land. So. And uh, to Aboriginal culture, you know, it's like uh, the land is our mother. You don't do that. Just uh, once that damage, all the money in the world can never buy, get that back. Aboriginal communities have been really affected by the extreme weather events and the worst thing is that um, you know a lot of our remote communities have been left weeks without aid and our communities are less adapted to deal with the impacts of climate change and that's why as young people that are city based that you know they have the education we need to stand up and speak for our mob and get our mob connected on this issue because it really is going to affect us. So the Bundy event couldn't come fast enough. We got there finally after the big drive from Warabinda and we had an amazing welcome to country from Uncle Merv Johnson, um, a traditional owner from the Grangarang land, um, as well as his um, dancers. That followed on from a panel which had myself Uncle Merv Johnson, Luke Watson from Wild and Everett Johnson. We basically just had a really open discussion about climate change and how it's affecting our First Nations people and the importance that our culture has to our people and how climate change is affecting our right to practice our culture. And having such a respected elder um, tell me that he was proud of all the work that I've been doing and that he wants to um, work closer with me in my school. Um, really was probably the highlight of the Seed Road trip for me.
and since that day I've really dedicated myself to the issue of climate change um, and it was sort of around that time where I started connecting my childhood memories to what I was seeing now at home um, coastal erosion and um, just irregular weather patterns um, causing financial hardship due to floods, um, bushfires that we've had go through our property. Um, over the year, it's only been one year, just over, um, SEED has grown into this amazing initiative of young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people wanting to create change and doing that by taking, taking on the role of leadership. Um, and Siege just helped empower so many young people to have their voice heard um, and you can already start to see a change within our communities. Um, it's become very talked about in the media which is awesome and we're having very influential people come out and say that it is important. Um, and it's definitely Indigenous people that need to be at the forefront because we're feeling impacts first and we're feeling them worse. Um, and we know that if something can be done in the past, it can be done again. And we've lived sustainably off this land for tens of thousands of years. My name's Angel Owen and I'm a bachelor woman from Fraser Island. And I'm currently living on Garang Garang land in Agnes Water, Queensland. One of the stories for me out of the road trip that stood out was, uh, was Sherberg. Um, and so we were lucky enough to go and visit something called the Ration Shed. And um, basically Sherberg was a mission where a lot, of, uh, a lot of different people from different nations were sort of brought together and lumped in one area. And uh, these are people that, you know, didn't necessarily get along with each other. So, you know, they were warring nations and and other nations there too. So it was like a big sort of, you know, mixed up mess really. Um, but they were forced to stay there. So, you know, they had to live off, you know, what they could. Um, and the ration shed was where um, people were given, you know, supplies to last them the week, which is, you know, probably not really enough to survive the week. You know, like a couple of scoops um, of flour, tea and sugar and, and just basic supplies really and uh, these things came out of Aboriginal wages that were stolen basically um, and but the way that this history was taught was like it was really a positive thing it was really you know it's brought the community together because the ration shed's been brought from you know out of town um, and it's been re-erected like right in the middle of town and it's been like restored and it's got heaps of photos of all these people from um, from over the years and um, for them to share that history with us was like, was, you know, it was really great because it gave us a picture of what went on um, and it also gave us, you know, a bit of an insight as to, you know, how these people have, you know, how people can turn something quite traumatic, something potentially really negative that you would want to forget into something positive um, that needs to be recognised. And for me, climate change is another one of those things. Um, it's something that could be quite negative, um, but it's also an opportunity to rearrange the way things work. Um, people don't usually come together very well unless there's a crisis at hand, um, and that unites them. And I think this could be, uh, as was said on the video, the, the crisis that unites us. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, there was a big highlight last night. We uh, ran an event um, and we just sort of wrapped up the road trip and presented it uh, to the wider community. Um, some of us gave some speeches and the vibe was really good and it just sort of encapsulated everything that we were doing, um, including uh, hearing stories on the ground about climate change, uh, spreading awareness uh, and involving community. The passion is evident in this group of inspiring young brothers and sisters and with their determination, momentum is sure to keep building into the future. The power of our movement for climate justice is growing. 
While Adani struggles to get this project off the ground, the rest of the world is moving beyond fossil fuels, banks are distancing themselves from funding the destruction of our Great Barrier Reef, and people everywhere are rising up to the challenge to create a more sustainable world. Having witnessed drought-stricken country all throughout Queensland, heard stories of the changing environment, and driven along the train lines that carry the destruction of sacred land, we know that as young people, we can't just sit by. Because it should be Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. It should be Indigenous people from all around the world leading this movement. We have lived sustainably for 60,000 years. It's an unbroken legacy of the most successful sustainability that this world has ever known. It's an unbroken chain that I refuse to be the broken link in. This should be something that is taken seriously because it is people's livelihoods at stake here. It is our livelihoods at stake. At SEED, we're hopeful for the future that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander young people are building. The future that is backed by our aunties and uncles, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends who are joining the call for climate justice. Our people, for once, actually have the tools and the teachings to lead the way into the future, out of this climate crisis. Our movement is growing, but it's up to us. Sign up to seedmob.org.au and be a part of making climate justice a reality for our people.